Greetings from Pablo Ardano, Fulbright Research Scholar at the Agricultural Sustainability Institute, University of California, Davis, and co-founder of the NGO Permaculture in Ukraine. Welcome to the series of video lectures on designing crop polycultures, which is supported by the International Visegrad Fund. The topic of this lecture is the role of polycultures in carbon sequestration and in mitigation and adaptation to climate change. On the description to this video, you will find the links to different sections of this video lecture, as well as uh, to the slides where you can uh, study spreadsheets to compare different adaptation and mitigation approaches. Polycultures contribute to adaptation and mitigation to climate change in many ways. First, they would allow to increase productivity of arable land use. Recent analysis of 939 intent cropping observations demonstrated that intercrops produced 38% more gross energy and 33% more gross incomes on average, whilst using 23% less land. For example, 100 hectares of timber trees intercropped with cereals would require 130 to 140 hectares of separate monocultures of timber and cereals to get the same yield. In addition to niche partitioning, facilitation of resource use, and nursing effect, which are all reviewed in my lecture about intercropping and designing crop polycultures, uh, which uh, contribute to better resource use efficiency and higher yield, polycultures are also less affected by droughts uh, than monoculture and can prevent soil erosion and not nutrient leaching. Uh, higher diversity of plant species increase the number of ecological niches, which can uh, further increase the number of associated resident species, including red list species contributing to biodiversity conservation. Uh, such an approach may transform the agriculture sector from one of the biggest greenhouse gas emitters, uh, which accounts from uh, 10 to 35 percent of greenhouse gas emission in Europe and about 9 percent in the USA, to efficient uh, CO2 sink uh, capable of conserving up to uh, 0 0.5 to 1.5 pentagrams of carbon annually. One pentagram uh, is 10 raised to 18 powers uh, metric tons of carbon. When preference is given to no-till, functionally assembled perennial polycultures. The ideal carbon farming system performs multiple functions carbon sequestration, climate change adaptation, and high yield that can compete with the baseline carbon unfriendly practices in the region. On average, organic yield are 19.2% lower than conventional, but the incorporation of multi-cropping, including both polycultures and sequential cropping, and crop rotation, can cut this gap in half or more. In conservation agriculture, the concept of carbon farming have been extended uh, with other uh, climate adaptation strategies, including the increase of uh, soil water holding capacity, allowing for better drought resistance and reducing soil erosion and emission that results from plowing. Researchers have determined some general guidelines. Fast-growing trees sequester more carbon in the first 10 years, but slower-growing ones sequester more after that. Slow-growing trees often have denser wood, and denser wood sequester more carbon. Denser wood is uh, also used for longer-lived durable products after timber harvest, uh, leading to a, a long-term sequestration. Deciduous and semi-evergreen uh, trees uh, compete less for light with understory crops and may therefore allow a higher density of uh, trees with higher carbon capture. It should be noted that in boreal climates, evergreen trees would have undesirable albedo effect, which may even offset the sequestration uh, impact in temperate climates. But soil organic carbon stocks under coniferous species may be rel relatively high due to an accumulation of more recalcitrant to mineralization acidic litter in the organic layer. Species with higher root densities are uh, more effective in carbon sequestration and uh, trees uh, sequester more carbon than shallow rooted worm season grasses. 
Combining cool season and warm season plants and uh, other types of resource partitioning among plants increase carbon sequestration. Different cultivars uh, within a species can vary in a carbon sequestration potential. Researchers have found from 20 to 100 percent more carbon in soil under nitrogen fixing plants. On the other hand, nitrogen fixing plants give off extremely potent greenhouse gases such as nitrous oxide. Yet, scientists have not reached a conclusion about how significant it is. Preference should be given to uh, perennials that are non-destructively harvested, including standard woody, managed multi-stem woody, coppiced woody, standard herbaceous and herbaceous hay systems. Soil microbial biomass uh, plays a dual role in a soil organic matter turnover, uh, balancing its mineralization and stabilization processes. It is often referred as microbial carbon pump, as uh, microbial residues and exudates may contribute up to 80% of carbon in stable soil organic matter fraction. In many soil ecosystems, soil nitrogen rather than soil carbon may influence the immobilization of organic matter by the microbial biomass, what explains why uh, nitrogen fixing plants can positively influence nitrogen content in soil. Soil fauna affect uh, uh, soil organic uh, carbon storage by affecting soil structure and by incorporating organic residues into uh, soil where they become available to the soil microbial community. Also, soil microfauna can protect soil organic matter against mineralization by mixing it with uh, soil particles. Earthworm feeding activities have been suggested to induce long-term stabilization of soil organic carbon, as carbon is protected from microbial attack by the formation of microaggregates within the macroaggregates in earthworm casts. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change rates rotation and cover crops as having medium uh, potential global impact, being easily adopted by farmers and ready to buy implementation in 5 to 10 years. Uh, while uh, tillage and uh, crop residue retention as high potential, easy adoption and ready to go. Sequestration rate uh, for organic annual uh, cropland worldwide have been estimated to uh, at uh, 0.7 to 1.2 tons per hectare per year. However, uh, uh, there have also been some individual reports on incredible sequestration rates for regenerative organic systems that employ such practices as cover cropping, no-till and the application of manure with a carbon sequestration rate ranging from uh, 2.3 to 6.8 ton per hectare per year. The impact of crop rotation on soil carbon sequestration is defined by the combination of species selection and soil management. Cover crop improve microbial carbon use efficiency and increase microbially uh, derived stable soil organic carbon content. And thus cover crops are the major drivers of carbon sequestration in rotation schemes. The soil organic carbon sequestration depends on the quantity of residues uh, returned to the soil throughout uh, crop rotation. Uh, soil organic uh, carbon uh, sequestration may be increased in intense rotation aimed at increasing agronomic production when fallow is eliminated. Crop rotations that include a period of uh, in perennial uh, grassland uh, for grazing or hay are especially beneficial for carbon sequestration. Soil carbon will increase if pasture phase will constitute 50% of rotation cycle, in particular in no-till farming systems. In one study, uh, soil carbon under pasture cropping doubled over the course of 10 years. Carbon sequestration potential is also determined by environmental condition, temperature, precipitation and soil organic content in soil. In soil with already high uh, uh, carbon content, uh, rotation may not contribute substantially to increasing uh, soil carbon pool. 
On average, a transition from simple to more complex rotation would promote carbon deposition for additional 40-60 years. Carbon to nitrogen and lignin to nitrogen ratio in uh, crop residues define the rate of decomposition and hence nutrient release uh, or carbon transformation onto more stable form of soil humus. There are controversial reports on either incorporation of residues increase or decrease decomposition rates. However, no-till management generally promotes soil carbon sequestration. Though carbon sequestration by cover crops is lower than uh, by other conservation practices, it can still play a significant role due to big total area of croplands, which occupy 40% of terrestrial surface, and potential to introduce this practice without yield loss or even with yield increase, as uh, in particular with uh, legume cover crops. On average, cover crops can contribute to 320 kg of carbon per hectare per year, or increase uh, the soil organic matter concentration in the upper rooting zone by about 0.3% every 10 years. Predicted steady state of carbon sequestration by cover crops would be reached after 155 years. Global carbon sequestration potential of uh, crop, uh, cover crops on 25% of the global cropland areas, which could be potentially uh, cropped, uh, was estimated as 8% or 10% by other researchers of the direct annual greenhouse gas emission from agriculture. It is higher than a transition to no-till and almost the same rate as afforestation of croplands. There are two main strategies to increase carbon sequestration. Decreasing the composition of soil organic matter, preliminary by reduced tillage, and increasing carbon input. Later is achieved by cultivation of green manures and winter cover crops during fallow periods. A large part of carbon input from cover crop is added as roots which contribute more efficiently to the relatively stable uh, uh, carbon pool than above-ground uh, carbon input. Uh, in addition, cover crops take up excess soil nitrogen and uh, pre uh, prevent uh, uh, nitrous oxide emission, which has almost 300 times greater greenhouse potential than CO2. Residues of cover crops left on surface have higher uh, nitrogen oxide emission than when they are incorporated into soil. Reduced fertilizer use after legume crop also contributes to emission reduction. Interestingly, that at least one study reported no difference in annual soil organic carbon stock between tillet and no tillet plots with cover crops. At the same time, rapidly decomposed biomass of cover crops with low carbon to nitrogen ratio can cause priming of the composition of more stable soil organic carbon pool due to increase of microbial growth by additional energy input. For example, in submerged rice cultivation, cover crops increase global warming potential by 400% compared to fallow. Albedo is the capacity of surfaces to reflect solar radiation and thus to increase heat accumulation. The surface albedo change due to cover cropping may mitigate from 12 to 46 grams of carbon emission per square meter per year over a 100 year time horizon. The only combination in this model that exacerbated warming uh, has high albedo soil coupled with low albedo crop, especially when uh, cover crop overtop snowpack or when high albedo cash crop residues uh, have significant soil cover. Though uh, crop residues which are partially covered with snow can induce snow melting, such effect is balanced by the spring cooling effect on soil by cover crops. Among different types of cover crops, perennial grasses are particularly important in providing climate change related ecosystem services. They are particularly efficient in preventing nutrient leaching, as their deeper root system is effective at assimilating soil nitrate before it leaches below the root zone. 
As a consequence, they can mitigate uh, soil acidification. Soil carbon accumulation can be tenfold greater under warm season perennial grasses comparing to no-till fallow. As perennial grasses accumulate carbon both in near surface up to 10 cm depths and subsurface from 30 to 90 cm soil depths, they are efficient in carbon immobilization as carbon which is stored below 30 cm soil depths is less susceptible to mineralization and loss by soil disturbance. Due to greater water uptake, perennial grasses pastures can limit salt accumulation in near uh, surface soil depths uh, due to uh, capillary rise. Perennial grasses uh, has more root biomass, higher amount of rhizo deposits and reduce fluctuations in temperature and water in water content. Therefore, perennial grasses create more stable environment for soil biota. For example, Bermuda grass sustain a higher level of herbascular mycorrhiza fungi and microbial biomass. Cover crop management also contributes to increasing agricultural resilience to climate change through reduced vulnerability to erosion uh, from extreme rain events, increased soil water management option during droughts or period of soil saturation, and retention of nitrogen mineralized due to warming, with potential of grasses to reduce uh, leaching uh, being on average 2.5 fold higher than fallow and 25% higher than fallow for legumes. Climate change in its turn also creates additional opportunities for cover crops. For instance, warming may enable selection of deep-rooted uh, species that are more effective in preventing leaching from the whole soil profile. Warming is expected to enhance the main ecosystem services provided by the cover crops by increasing cover crop growth and allowing cover crops to reach a minimum threshold level for erosion control before freezing, which uh, require uh, over 30% of soil cover. Multi-species mixtures with complementary environmental tolerances could be more stable under variable climate. Uh, for example, with grasses serving as north plants for legumes to survive in cold climate. Elevated CO2 uh, offer additional opportunities to increase productivity of certain plants, in particular for three plants including major crops such as uh, rice, wheat, potato, soybean, cotton, and tobacco, where expected uh, productivity would increase on average by 70% under adequate nitrogen supply, for example, in case of combination with nitrogen-fixing plants, and only by 3% under low nitrogen, when legumes are excluded. Among C3 plants, uh, uh, those with large carbon sinks in the form of carbohydrate storage organs, such as potato and cassava, and with woody tissues, such as cotton, uh, can have particularly strong growth responses to elevated CO2. For the same reason, positive effect of elevated CO2 on growth and yield in legume species will be uh, particularly pronounced. However, elevated CO2 poses potential threat to agriculture production, as it would lead to reduced protein level in tissues, for example, from 8 to 31% in cereal grains, which would be detrimental for human nutrition. Parkland agriculture, arable land with clumps of trees and shrubs, can sequester from 0.4 to 1.1 tons of carbon per hectare per year, a low rate uh, that reflects a low tree density uh, and a dry climate with poor soil. Evergreen agriculture, an integration of evergreen tree species uh, into annual uh, food crop system, uh, is uh, estimated to sequester carbon at a rate uh, from 2 to 4 tons per hectare per year, which is more uh, than less densely treated parkland system. Windbreaks can sequester uh, 6.4 tons of carbon per linear kilometer, and in semi-arid regions, 
protective hedgerows and living fences sequester uh, from uh, 1 to 8 tons uh, uh, of carbon per hectare per year. Riparian buffers are estimated to uh, sequester uh, 2.6 tons per hectare per year. Short rotation copies system have total sequestration rates uh, from uh, uh, 4.3 to 7 tons per hectare per year. Uh, perennial grains uh, have carbon sequestration potential of 0.2 to 0.8 tons per hectare per year. They can be grown in rotation uh, with two uh, to four years of cropping, followed by uh, seeding of annual crops or pasture, uh, much as uh, hay and pasture are integrated in crop rotation today. Perennial grains might yield uh, for a few years and then be grazed as a pasture. For example, perennial grain carnza is used to manage weeds, yield uh, both a, a cereal grain crop and a, a seasonal livestock production. Perennial cereal grains can be intercropped with perennial legumes in alternate strips for ease of mechanical harvest. Multistrata agroforestry has by far the best carbon sequestration rates of any food production systems, between 10 and 40 times higher than typical improved annual crop production and managed grazing. Uh, its annual sequestration rate is between uh, 13 and 40 tons per hectare. A study in Philippines found that both home gardens and multistrata agroforests, which include timber, fruit, nut, coffee, banana and native trees, outcompete natural forests in annual carbon sequestration and above, above ground carbon stocks and outcompete preserved old uh, growth forests in annual carbon sequestration. Maximum annual sequestration of pastures is uh, about uh, 1.5 tons per hectare per year. Silvopasture systems that integrate timber or forage trees are estimated to sequester uh, from 3 to 10 tons of hectare uh, per year uh, of carbon globally. Common tree species in silvopasture system include oaks and many species of pot-bearing legume trees. Some fodder trees are suitable for ruminant livestock, some for non-ruminants, and some for both. One of the most famous fodder uh, tree silvopasture system is the Deheza or Montado of Spain and Portugal. In addition to integration of trees, polycultures of pasture plants can be designed with an additional aim to reduce methane production in ruminants. Ruminant digestion and the methane of all livestock accounts from 80% of agricultural methane emission and 35-40% to of anthropogenic methane emission. Strategies to design a better quality pastures with improved productivity that reduce the percentage of methane per ruminant animal include high tanning forages from woody legumes, low fiber feed, and integration of certain oilseed crops. In cool season grass-dominated grasslands, light grazing tend to sequester carbon, while moderate and heavy grazing cause uh, soil carbon losses. In video description below, you will find the links to slides as well as references and highlights to publications cited in this video lecture. Finally, I invite growers of tree, nut and fruit crops, all growers with experience in crop diversification, researchers and agriculture extension specialists to participate in one of the surveys listed on the slide. The links are also provided in the description to this video. With your help, we will be able to develop free software to help farmers to design crop polycultures. We also invite you to subscribe to our Facebook page Polycultures and Permaculture, where we share useful information on crop polycultures from the academic publication and directly from growers. And we invite you to share your practical experience on this page.
On our website, you will find recorded conference presentations, proceedings and resolution of the Research and Practice Conference Polycultures and Permaculture, which was organized in January-February 2020. Thank you very much for your attention.